where the where the ground is, and then uh, and then start to determine what might be the next path. So it's a heck of a way to start. You know, by the way, it's a double tournament. It's a lot of busy action going on. It's great. It's great to be along. Uh, it's great to be here in person. Uh, the chance to just be around staff, our, our coaches, um, certainly the, the, the Wildcat fans that travel so well, uh, to try to get ingrained in the program. So I've, I've enjoyed that. Watched the Pac-12 tournament uh, from afar. It was an amazing experience, but I'm, I'm, I'm just glad to be in, engulfed in it now. It feels really good. How, how much communication have you had with uh, the former athletic director, Greg Byrne? Uh, you know, Greg and I are, are, uh, are friends and, and professional friends, so off and on he and I have, have chatted uh, about things. He's got a big job in front of him. Um, you know, I just kind of wanted to know where uh, where it might be a good place to live and, and, you know, which road to take into work sometimes. So, no, it, it, he's, he's offered some, some thoughts about the program and shared where he thinks it is and, and what some things that were on the horizon that we need to talk about. Is this a good time to start? Is there any other time in the calendar that would be better than this? No, I don't think there's a, a better time. I think this is a really good time, though. I, I feel like it's a good time. Um, coming in as the, you know, the the winter sports come to a close, um, we're into heavy into our spring sports and the success we'll have. So it gives, gives us some time to get involved and, and see how the programs work. Um, again, at, at, in trying to assess what's there and, and how culture that's here, the, the important pieces of it, gives me some time and uh, and then opportunities to get prepared for next year rather than coming in late. I think coming in late would have been, uh, is, is, is more challenging certainly. Uh, so this gives us some time to get ready for, for next year. If they happen to advance, would you go to San Jose? Yeah, that's my intent. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's my intent. So I dropped my glasses there. So um, That's my intention is to, to follow them along and I uh, hope I can do that. As an AD, and pardon me if I, I don't know this because I don't, have you gone, how far have you gone as a, in basketball? Have you ever gone? Uh, I've been with, uh, when I was at Oregon, we were in the Elite Eight. No, at and, and Central. At Central Michigan? Uh, no, we haven't been this far. So, uh, <laughs> so my times in these experiences in the last 11 years, uh, while we've been really competitive, our, our focus has been on building that program, uh, two programs, a men's and women's program that had been um, really underperforming. And now they're, they're contenders for, for conference championships. We want to get to those teams want to get to the NCAA tournament. Our women's program did. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, I've been a, I've been a, a spectator and uh, behind the scenes uh, on, on this in, uh, uh, in my past living. And how did it feel last night? It felt great. Um, this is big time. This is the national level. This is, uh, this is where you want to be. This is the best. And I think that's what we want to do at Arizona. We want our programs to, to win conference championships and to compete on the national level and have a chance to win national championships. And, uh, how much of a culture change is this, uh, basketball-wise, from the other two places you've been? Uh, you know, hey, it's important. It's important here. It's important. Uh, it was important there at Central Michigan. Again, I, I've been at this level with Oregon. Um, very familiar with my national level kind of experience and associations. How important uh, you know being involved is. But hey, there's no question. This is a national level program. This is a jewel, as I've said, of, of Arizona. And um, we want to contend for the national championship. And uh, yeah, it's darn important. What was it like when you went back, and told everybody goodbye? Uh, that wasn't easy. I'll be honest. Uh, we sunk, um, you know, 11 years of um, of our family's heart and soul. You know, my sons, all three of them, are Central Michigan students. Two of them play. One graduated as a baseball player. Another one in the program. So I look at it from. A little bit from an administrator and a dad standpoint. Um, great staff. We, I think we've grown so much there, and um, the staff's the big part of it. It's not about me. It was about our staff and what they've really done. Um, and then, you know, that was uh, that's where both Liz, my wife, and I are from, the state of Michigan. So to get back and to reconnect with so many people, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's it's yeah, it's, it's it's challenging. It's challenging to to do that, but uh, couldn't be more excited. You know, with that said, there's a new chapter here, and I'm, we're ready to, to move forward. Um, those will be great memories. I'll always be a Central Michigan person and a Chippewa, and uh, that program's got so much potential to keep going forward. But um, I'm all Wildcat now and, and really excited to be part of it. What, last night, because you were behind this bench, yeah. close to it, yeah. your impressions of Sean initially as a coach and what he does and how he runs Love how he coaches. Love it. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's obviously very composed on the sideline, knows what he wants to accomplish. Um, you know, he gets his point across to his players. 
uh, in very direct ways that I think is important. Um, and uh, I think the, the program's in great hands. I, I, I'm very impressed with Sean. He's a great coach. Great coach. What are the first few things on the agenda as soon as you take over full time? Well, I, I guess I've joked about this. I need to find how to get to work and where the coffee pot is. We're going to put in a lot of long hours to, to make sure we can. But it's really assessing, a lot of listening. Um, those first uh, 60 to 100 days, you know, it's just learning about the program, really getting behind the scenes and understanding all the pieces. And uh, and that, that you need to know that before you can really start to embark on, okay, where do you want to go? Um, just got to understand the full landscape. But, uh, but you can't spend a whole lot of time on that. We've got to get things in place. We've got to be focused. And then we need to act swiftly and quickly with a plan going forward. You come from a football program that had a lot of success this year. Uh, how important is the football program success here at the U of A? Hey, it's no secret in Division One, no matter where you are. You know, football is an important thing. Um, we want to give the, the resources and the support so our football program can be, can be very, very successful. And that, that's what we're going to focus on, being successful there as well. Uh, tremendous revenue opportunities. Uh, we, want, we want to fill the house. We want to have a great environment. We want to do all of those things. And uh, so we've got, to, we've got to step back and look at what we need to do to make sure that we can be highly successful in football. Did you ever... Picture yourself staying at Central Michigan until you retired? Uh, well, I've been a person, I, again, I, I haven't hopped around much. Um, you know, I always go into it looking at you know, this, this, I want a job that I know I could be there for, for the rest of my time, that I could stay there and, and, and be there for the rest of my time. And so I never went into the Central Michigan job looking at it as a stepping stone or something other than that. Uh, fully embraced it, I just became engulfed in it, and um, Put everything into it with the intention of being there for a long time. So, sure, um, wasn't dissatisfied, wasn't wasn't looking for anything. Um, but when you have a chance to, to come to a program with a national level reputation, back in the Pac-12 where I'm familiar, I'm comfortable, I love the West. Um, you know, you had to take a look at it, had to had to really, you know, focus in on that. Um, so it, it's, but likewise, I, I. Hope to be here the rest of the time. You know, focused on being here for a real long time. Who reached out to you first? What was the first call? Um, it, it was Rocky LaRose. Rocky, um, Rocky called, and, and Rocky and I know each other from the past. And, and I, Rocky doesn't call me every week. And her her number came up, and I thought, wow, this is interesting. She must be wanting to talk to me about someone that I know that they want to talk to about the Arizona job. And uh, I think some of the story has been documented. You know, I, it was a little tough to get hold of each other with cell service. And when she said, well, what do you think? Uh, it took me by surprise a little bit. And uh, maybe in the back of my mind, it was like, I wonder if they'd ever want to talk to me. And, uh, and when she said that, I was really uh, a little surprised and honored. And uh, that's kind of how it started. Did you really catch John Smoltz? I did. Yep. John and I, uh, I did. Caught John at the, uh, in, in summer ball. Um, John's a few years younger than I am. Uh, we were in Johnstown, Pennsylvania for the national uh, tournament in Johnstown. And um, hey, <laughs> as, and he was a 16-year-old, and uh, nobody threw harder than him. Uh, but it is an, I do have a couple stories on that one. I mean, we, we went up against a team from the Bronx, New York. And so a bunch of kids from Lansing, Michigan, uh, going to Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and playing guys in pinstripes. And they looked like the New York Yankees, and uh, and they played like them that day too. We we were humbled really quickly, and and uh, and John was the starting pitcher. Uh, he, he didn't make it all the way through, <laughs> but uh, it was fun. Yeah, John John was the you could tell right away. Um, he was he was pretty special. The, I coached against John I, early in my time when I was still in grad school. I was coaching high school baseball and. Um, had the pleasure of watching him beat us one time when I was calling the pitches, and uh, he, he. Now our pitcher, I always say our pitcher didn't throw the pitch that I I was calling. So, <laughs> but he hit a he hit a he hit it out of the park in a city championship, high school championship, and won the won the league championship against us and uh, um, in the in the bottom of the seventh inning. So, early on in your administrative days, did you ever give any idea that maybe working in professional baseball? No, you know, I was, uh, when I went to Ohio State, got engulfed in that program in grad school, I always, I was a student athlete, um, it always, this is where I wanted to be, I wanted to be in college athletics, big part of my life, and um, I enjoy, I enjoy this environment. Um, so. how, how did you connect all the way across the country to Oregon? How did that? Uh, I'll be honest with you, um, I knew no one, um, I was applying for jobs, um, a, a 
woman that I worked for at Michigan State at that time knew someone at Oregon, and that just got my resume in the right pile. And they, I did a phone interview, and then I don't know why they spent all that money, but they asked me to come out and interview for the job, and, and I got it. And uh, so um, that was that was kind of, that was where it started. That's where my career really started was at Oregon. So uh, that, that's really how it, it, it didn't, didn't have strong ties. And I had never been watching Chicago before. I, I couldn't have told you where. Portland, Oregon was probably at that time. So, although my wife actually, her mother had worked in Portland and had gone in the 40s, had left her when she finished college, she moved to Portland, Oregon to work in a hospital. So, I, we were a little bit of a yeah. time there. Cool. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Yeah, thanks.